we were talking about uh, the nine millimeter versus the forty and other all the other calibers, Which and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, stuff started to just pop into my head that just didn't make sense. So I started to I created the list of questions that I had for Paul, and from that list, it's like you know what we really need to go and start to like look at stuff and and look at the history of like what is considered a really good man stopper and then where did that come from and so i have to insert insert a joke here a really good man stopper is a is a woman who asks him to take the garbage out boom every time anyway go ahead Add thank you for that. so um i started doing some research on uh, what's been what historically had been considered a real man stopper, which is the 357 Magnum and its development by Smith and Wesson back in the 30s, blah blah blah. Along with the, I mean, they started to develop that because the 38 Super was developed, and so lots of numbers started flying around. I said, you know, I, I got to create a chart so that I can understand where this stuff is coming from, and and there's a lot of opinions out there, but you can't really fudge the numbers. So what I did was I created a spreadsheet and I went on to multiple websites and started looking at the absolute hottest ammo you can buy for the 357 Magnum, the 10 millimeter, the 357 SIG, the 45 ACP, the 40 Cal, the 38 Super, the 327 Magnum, the 9 millimeter, the 22 Magnum, 38 Special, 380, and a 32. And I went on to every website where I could find ammunition for sale, and I found the absolute hottest ammo I could find on in that particular caliber. And then I did ran some numbers based on the foot pounds. Uh, I took explain to the to the folks who may not understand what foot pound pounds are. Well, before before we get to that, All I took right. 10, 10 of the hottest loads that I could find in whatever manufacturer, and I took the numbers that the manufacturer gives, which are usually somewhat opti op optimistic. Optimistic. That's a, word. Uh, That's a real word. Yes, it is. And I took those numbers and I averaged them. And I broke it down into two categories, one with a three shot average, because most gunfights end up being three shots for self-defense, and one as a combat caliber, something that you would go to war with. And then again, I found firearms that held a high capacity, the highest capacity I could find. I'm sure... I'm, I'm going to try to insert okay. the picture here into the chat. Okay. So I'm sure there are firearms that can hold more than 15 rounds of 357 SIG. But I tried to find firearms that would, would, that would hold those cartridges flush. So it was a legitimate carry piece, like in a real holster, not with a magazine that was hanging out the bottom by like a foot and a half. Uh, bottom of the gun. So then I compiled the numbers and I looked at the velocities. I looked at the pound foot um, and I looked at bullet weights and what seems to be the real important number really is the pound foot of energy at the muzzle at 25 feet and at a hundred yards. And what I came up with was a list of these cartridges, and I organized them uh, with the most effective cartridges at the top and the least effective cartridges at the bottom. And I started to really think about... I have where... the graph up, that, by the way, right. now, so people can look at it. So I started to really go back again into the history of the cartridge of the cartridges and try to understand why 
the military and the police seem to think that the nine millimeter is a good cartridge for self-defense and that it is a good cartridge for battle. And I would say it is in the mediocre range for both. Well, so let's, let's go, ahead. Go, go ahead. I was going to say, let's, let's go through this chart here. I don't know if you're going to go right to the second part. I didn't really want to do that. I want to well, talk a little bit more into the chart. So what I want to do is go into the history a little bit about the 357 Magnum. Okay, let's do that. Good idea. So, so back in the 30s, the 38 Special was really the gun that all the cops carried. And at the time, the maximum foot-pound energy was like 150 pounds. That's like what a modern 32 ACP is. And that was like a six-shot revolver that shot 150-pound foot cartridges and everyone swore by those firearms in law enforcement and in self-defense and so when the uh, bootleggers and the highway uh, bandits and and the the gangsters were all getting into shootouts with cops cops were losing because the bandits were shooting 45s and 38 supers so Smith and Wesson decides to create something very powerful uh, and the first cartridge to be designated Magnum. I mean, there were Magnum cartridges from the British uh, designation of Magnum for rifles, but they made an extra hot cartridge in a revolver, called it the Magnum. And officers that had to shoot through cars and walls and through thicket and trees really liked this cartridge because it was a man stopper. And back then you didn't have the pound foot energy of 680. Maybe you had four or five at the most, but nevertheless, it was considered a man stopper. And so from that point in the 1930s, all the way to the early 1980s, the benchmark of man stopping was the 357 Magnum. And years ago, it's actually not that long ago, a few years ago, I had read a study where police who used a 40 caliber in a shootout, uh, the statistics showed that most people who got shot with a 40 cal stopped engaging the police. One shot, so one it, kill. It wasn't mm -hmm. one shot, one kill, but it was one shot, one neutralization. And if you look at the pound foot here, of the 40 cal, you're in the 500 pound foot or foot pounds, which is what the 357 Magnum was close to back in the day. Yeah, the 40 cal is one, two, three, four. It's five down on the left side of the chart, on the self defense side of the chart, and the battle is three down. So so you can see the, the 40 cal is really like my baseline for stopping power for a one shot and stopping the fight cartridge. And you're putting uh, it at 513 foot pounds. Right. So in a self defense situation, if you get three shots off on target, you're putting 1,500 pounds, foot pounds, into that target, at least at the muzzle. Um, and the 9 millimeter at that point falls quite short of that. Now, does the 9 millimeter do okay? Bless you. Thank you. Yes, it most certainly does. But every cartridge that I selected in the 9 millimeter was a plus P, which means this is the absolute hottest cartridge you can find for that nine millimeter. That this isn't the these are you know the regular uh, foot pounds for a nine millimeter is around three hundred and sixty, which is double that of the thirty eight special back in the day. Um, back in the day, it was at one hundred and fifty two hundred at most for very hot loads. 
So the nine millimeter is adequate, but when you compare it to modern cartridges, when you compare it, well, let's, let's step back for a second. Let's step back to the Miami incident where all those federal agents got killed. 1986 Miami shooting anyone who really is involved with guns to any degree uh, knows about that shooting because it was a, a significant game changer. It's where the, the 40 ultimately comes from, ultimately. It's where the 40 comes from. It's where the 357 SIG comes from. And is it is where... I don't want to say that the 10 millimeter comes from because the 10 millimeter was developed prior to that, but that's where when it became the, popular. Yeah. Well, that's where it became, it, where it got its speaking. notoriety. Yeah. It's got, it got its notoriety for sure. Yeah. But because it of that, it became event, popular with the FBI for a period of time. Correct. But because of that event, we have cartridges that are now so superior to the nine millimeter and that come close to the 357 Magnum in the automatic uh, platform, that the 9mm is a mediocre choice at best. I'm not saying it's not the right gun f for some people. It most certainly is. And it's certainly a good cartridge um, for those who are recoil, recoil shy or if you are wearing tight clothes or it's the summertime. There's a there's a purpose for the nine millimeter. And if you're going to get three shots in, in self-defense mode, better than the nine with a nine millimeter than a, let's say a, a 380 or a 32. And they're making those nine millimeters small enough now where you can, you can hide them pretty, pretty well. But is that an ideal self-defense cartridge? Hell no. I'm, it's not an ideal self-defense cartridge. But right. And is it, it is, it is, it still have a function. Absolutely. But so does the 32 ACP, but we're not, you know, we're not arming our men and women in law enforcement and, uh, in our, the military. Our? Yeah. Put that in our? quotes. I didn't sign. Okay. I didn't sign that contract, sir. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. So those folks, are definitely not being set into combat with a 32 ACP. There are cartridges superior to the 32. There are cartridges superior to the nine millimeter. Um, <coughs> it's like this. The, the nine millimeter was developed at the turn of the century, uh, the last century, uh, along with a lot of the other cartridges that we're talking about. So, you know, since then, there have been lots of developments in metallurgy, in chemistry, um, that allows firearms to carry more with more power and more capability. If I were to tell you that I had a race car from 1942 and it's the best race car that was ever built and it's the best in the world today, you'd say, hey. You know, from a historic perspective, that might be true. But compared to some of the sports cars today that have four, five, 600 horsepower with extremely sophisticated suspension and with computers monitoring the traction, dude, your little sports car from 1942, by comparison, is mediocre might look Hell, beautiful, but it's still yeah. mediocre. But my grandmother's Buick could probably outperform that sports car. You heard so, it here first. Yes. So um, it's nice that you have that historic relic, but there are better vehicles for the task. Yeah. The same is true with the nine millimeter. There are. It is a fine cartridge, just like the forty-five ACP. Just like the 38 Super, just like the 38. But it is, is it the ideal self defense cartridge? It is not. Is it the ideal battle cartridge? It most certainly is not. So, why then 
is there such a big push for the nine millimeter, a thoroughly mediocre to poor choice in self-defense and war? Why that is that, Paul? Is, that is the question. That is, we're, we're about ready to head. Well, I would like to look at the chart a little bit more, if 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 you don't mind, sir. Oh, um, go right ahead. So let me let me bring this chart up. So, so so what you can see. Let me look on my phone. I can see better on my phone. I can see this better on my phone. So, so the bottom for the first column, we're looking at self defense. Correct. And, in self-defense, we're looking at, uh, you're just looking at the per shot, and you're looking at three shots. Now, describe to them how you're determining your excellent, good, mediocre, poor on the self-defense, and why three shots? Well, because the 40 cal at the 500 mark, the 500 foot-pounds, seems to be the optimum force that will stop a perp with one shot. That is what the 357 Magnum was. That is what the 40 cal is. Uh, the 357 Magnum has, you know, graduated to bigger and better things since then. But 500 yeah, the, pound yeah, foot. The, 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 yeah, you have the 357 Magnum. Kunin, which is in at 689 feet and you're, you're looking at three shots and i don't really care about the aggregate total here the 2000 your right but your you're, average th th with a very shot. hot yeah, but your average of 10 rounds 10 different rounds from 10 different manufacturers um is 689 foot pounds at the muzzle that is Pretty substantial. That's, um, that's an excellent man stopper. Yes, that's, as is the 10 millimeter. That's even more of an excellent man stopper than when a, a man's girlfriend says she's pregnant. Oh! Dude, that was sexist. I can't believe you told me to tell you that, tell that joke. But yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it. If the average gunfight now is like 3.1 shots, um, and it's usually one person doing all the shooting, um, it's important to see which calibers are above the 500 mark. And the, again, these are very hot rounds. Um, yeah, three shots. You're, you're. I, I'm. I, I think we. Well, we'll get to the to the battle one, but well, but even, but even there's if another component. One and two. Right, but there's another component here. And that's that, you know, everyone's being sold that, well, the nine millimeter recoils less. Well, to get to these pressures and to these pound foot, you're actually shooting a much hotter round out of a very light firearm versus the 45s and the 40 cows that are built more beefy. The recoil of those cartridges at these pressures are not significantly more than the nine millimeter. Because when you're shooting nine mil in plus P or plus P plus, dude, those are hot rounds. The recoil is going to be substantial, and so if you're if you're not going to shoot I extremely say hot it's rounds, substantial. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's substantial unless you've never fired a gun before or you have uh, you know Smurf hands. What do you mean? Do you have Smurf uh -huh. hands? You know, tiny little uh -huh. Smurf hands. Uh, you lost me. The, the the recoil for a nine millimeter plus is not going to be like super dramatic. It's a lot hotter and whip and and uh, the recoil is ex extr uh, the recoil is much more noticeable in a nine millimeter plus P than it is with a standard forty cal. Yeah, but I'm saying it it's, is. it's not like it's substantially super, it's hot. not significantly difficult to handle. But for people the, who are buying is, it, 
your point is why are you uh sacrificing foot pounds when you're not really gaining that much and in some instances you're actually losing recoil advantage well correct if you're if you're buying a nine millimeter because you're recoil shy or you or you can't stay on target because of recoil and and now to keep up with the 40 and the 357 sig you're getting super hot rounds in nine millimeter you're better off going with a 40 cal and a heavier gun that's going to recoil about the same as a regular nine mil i'm sorry a, a nine millimeter loaded with plus p ammo recoils significantly more than a regular nine millimeter and you're yeah. losing that you're losing that advantage so so why what, go with nine millimeter plus p when you can just go 40 40 that's or 357 that's, that's sitting on the table here yeah or 45 or th or here's a here's a choice that few people make the 38 super outperforms the nine millimeter every time 30, 30 every 38 time. super on your chart so 474 compared to the nine millimeter is at 439 and again these are you're taking averages from multiple right. types of ammo right find the hottest ammo you can find so look at look at the difference between the nine millimeter in the battle uh configuration where you're shooting 17 rounds and the 38 super is get it closing in on that 500 foot pounds so in that's the, in the battle i have the chart up here so in the battle configuration what he's looking at here is uh the well you still have the total number of foot pounds but we 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 kind of well oh here you have perp stopped and we're 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 assuming uh, three shots, right? Three shots to hit one. Is that what we just determined? Well, three, so three to hit one. Two? Correct. Three to it's, hit one. Yeah. So, so you're looking at now. He's actually looking at like the particular uh, platforms that you could realistically have for that type of caliber. So, for instance, for a 357 Magnum, uh, you could find uh, you have the Kunin, which is nine rounds. Correct. So then that is looking, you're going to hit uh, oh, nine rounds. We must have been calculating uh, one and two. So you're, you're looking at four people that you could potentially stop with that caliber with that with that particular uh, gun. And so the, the one that ranks at the top on your list here is the Glock 20, 10 millimeter, 15 rounds, you could realistically stop six people with that. Yes, six point six people. So six point six. It gets people. it gets interesting because when you look at the three fifty seven Magnum or the ten millimeter, so one shot is a man stopper, but you need three shots, right? On average, right? Three to shots hit the to target. hit one, and then so and so then. If your if your foot pounds are lower, then you have to shoot six times. Like say your foot pounds is like three hundred, you need at least five hundred foot pounds on a target. Right. To so you would stop. need to hit him twice. So you'd so have you to six shoot rounds. six rounds to hit him twice. That that's the our assumption. What our assumption was. Yeah. So this is this is unscientific. This is just a right. conversation starter that we're doing here. So, but anyway, go ahead. When you look at the 10 millimeter that has foot pounds very similar to the 357 Magnum, wow! When you get 15 cartridges of 10 mil, you increase your odds of surviving a battle significantly over the 9 millimeter. The 9 millimeter using 17 rounds, you you might stop two and a half people. Maybe that's adequate for most battle situations. It may very well be. But when you start looking at the the 327, the 380, the 22, the 38 Special, the 32, those are all definitely poor choices, no matter how many rounds you load them up with. Yeah, you don't take uh, them into battle no matter what. No. And, and self-defense, they're a gun of last resort. But when you start talking about a 357 Magnum that can hold nine rounds, 
uh, now you're talking about something very serious, along with the 45 ACP that can hold 13 rounds. I mean, I found a couple of guns in 45 ACP that could hold 14 rounds, but the significant number that most guns was around 13 at the high, very high end, because most 45s, particularly in the, uh, in nice. the, um, in the 1911 configuration are only going to hold eight or nine. Like even, uh, even the 10 millimeter, there is a, there is a rock Island double stack 1911 that is 17 plus one uh, in 10 millimeter. Oh, so oh, I try to find that. the high end, but I try to keep it reasonable or realistic too. what most people are going to be finding and using. So when you look at the, the 357 SIG and the 40 cal, now those are battle worthy firearms. Even the 45 ACP gets close at four and a half people stopped. Uh, this is significant. Pretty adequate. P pretty. Yeah. Adequate. yeah. With 13 rounds, uh, 528 foot pounds per round. I mean, that is, that is substantial. That is a man stopper. I mean, the 40 cal is at the very bottom of the man stopping cartridges here. Above it is the 45 ACP, the 357 SIG, the 10 millimeter, the 357 Magnum, and it, the the availability. You know, the argument is often made about the nine millimeter. Well, all the ammunition now is so much better than it was back then when that Miami thing happened. That's true, but guess what? All of the 40 cal ammunition now is better, better all the 10 than it was. A few, is better. It's better. All the 45 is better. All the 357 SIG is better. All of these cartridges are better today than they were just a few years ago, including the not, 357 Magnum. Not only are the cartridges better, but the guns are better. Correct. They are able to handle recoil better than they could before. Like even this. This I talked about the Rock Island ten millimeter double stack, nineteen eleven, <sighs> slather. This this uh, I I mean I've never fired it I can't tell but I've watched a number of videos and uh, they 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 say that the the recoil on that is you you don't you don't guess that you're firing a ten millimeter the recoil is not a significant problem on that platform so. <laughs> Recoil isn't even as, as much of a factor as it once was. Unless, of course, you're going to buy a, I mean, if you're going to buy a, like a national a North American arms little Derringer and try to shoot a 45 out of that, good luck. <laughs> Outside of that. Oh, you're back. Who's back? Can you hear me? You are. Oh, me? Yeah. You're, you froze. I was texting you that you froze and I couldn't communicate. Oh. But you're back. Yeah. And I'm, I'm back. I'm everything's fine on my end. I think that everybody oh, can hear us too. Good. I I sure hope so, because otherwise. Uh, so what I was saying was I was talking about the Rock Island double stack and how right. that is that's a gun that's designed to really minimize the recoil of a ten millimeter, and and so yeah, recoil it's it's not as much of a factor as it once was. I'm not saying it's not a factor. It's just not as much of a factor, and I think that we have significantly set up the next part of this show. Hopefully, what we've established is that the 9mm, it's not trash, it's not garbage, for, I would still argue, for personal self-defense. You know, some of the major advantages of carrying a 9mm is, you know, you want to do pocket carry or something like that. It's going to real be real hard to find an effective pocket carry choice in 40 or 10. So so it still has its place. And I mean, I, for instance, when my pocket carry choice is a 9mm. And, and I feel like in most the potential threat situations in the world that I live, I I think a nine millimeter is 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 adequate. adequate. I'm willing to take I'm willing to take the trade off for the portability. That's the big issue, the portability. But when we're talking 
let's go beyond the individual. We're talking about FBI and we're talking about police and these folks, which realistically they can, they, they have at least a much more potential opportunity, whatever you want to say, to need something more significant. And and portable, concealed pocket carry, none of that. None of that's an issue for them. They're open carrying anyway for the most part, uh, unless they're like, you know, a deep six FBI agent or something. But certainly police and, and you know, most FBI, they're, they're, they're carrying their sidearm out there where they can access it. So that's not a major issue. So then the question is, uh, and this is where we get to your, this is the second part of the show is also thanks to... Professor Rambo. This is basically a Professor Rambo show. I'm just along for the ride on this one. Why? So, so I always assumed that the FBI was run by law enforcement folks, by law enforcement types, uh, people who were recruited in college, who went through the academy who maybe had military backgrounds, who were competent with firearms, who maybe had family members in a tradition of law, uh, law enforcement and military activity. Um, those were my assumptions until the Obama administration and the current situation that we have, where we see that the people, no, uh, I'm, I'm thanking him for illuminating me on who actually runs the FBI. It's not cops who have made it through the ranks. They're political appointees and they're all lawyers. All of them, all, the, the top echelons of the FBI are lawyers. When you're dealing with an agent, you're, you're probably dealing with someone who went to law school, not military academy or police academy. They went through the FBI academy, which is very different than your average beat cop goes through. I'm not saying that the training isn't tough, but it's different. So then if it's not cops who are on the streets who are picking the calibers, instead it's lawyers and bean counters who are political hacks who have been appointed, maybe that's a strong word, but political appointees. I'm going to go with hacks because to me, political and hack always go together. Okay. Well, so something just doesn't smell right there. Like law enforcement has proven that the 40 cal and most of the cops that I know who know anything would prefer to be carrying a 40 cal over a nine mil. Uh, recoil isn't an issue for most cops. Uh, they know that with one or two shots with a 40 cal, if someone's shooting at them and gets hit, they're not shooting back anymore. It's, it's like, it's like, I know I can kill you with a 22. You and I can get into a shootout and I can kill you with a 22. Well, I'm going to fill you full of holes today and you might die tomorrow. But in the process, you're going to keep shooting at me. And that's a problem. With a 40 cal, if I hit you once or twice, chances are you're going to stop shooting and take cover and say, I give up. I give up. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm out. I'm out. Um, so why is it that most cops that I know prefer 40 cal, 357 SIG um, over 9 mil? And they're actually pissed off that they're, a lot of their agencies are switching or their uh, departments are switching to 9 mil. Well, so, that's, what, that's, that's the title of the show. Why does the FBI hate cops? Well, are the lawyers who are political appointees, do they have an agenda, Paul? Could be. I, that's your theory. And I think... so. Why don't you read? Why don't you read the text that I sent? All right. Well, I'll going go down. through it all. Let me just go yeah. through first. Okay. Yeah. Reasons why lawyers in decision-making positions in federal agencies choose the nine millimeter. The first one is they hate law enforcement types. That's 
Let's do that. I hate law enforcement okay. types. Well, if you're a leftist and you have grown up hating the feds, as is so evident in most of the 60s and 70s culture, uh, and now you're in a decision-making position for these agencies, you went through college with Marxist sympathizers, and now you get to choose the gun for the agents that are on the streets. Huh. Which, which caliber would you choose? The best, most efficient caliber? Or one that's going to get cops killed? Or federal agents killed? That's it. That's it. Now, I, I want to make it is clear. Is that too provocative? This, is that this too is, provocative? This is, this is a conversation starter. I don't think that you're saying, oh, yeah, this is definitely the case. But, you know, this is, this is, this is the begs, pondering. It begs the question. And, and, and there the are many reason, more questions to be begged. And the reason these questions are coming up, hopefully we've shown, even though we're not totally scientific, I even, even, I think even if you consider the non-scientific of all, uh, nature of the chart that, uh, professor Rambo, uh, put out, even though it's non-scientific, it's, 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 it, it, it has some logic to it. It has some numbers to it. And the data, strongly suggests that nine millimeter should never be your caliber of choice for the police shouldn't be. So then, then you have to have these questions and, and you're right that a lot, but the people at the top of the FBI are not the ground. I mean, there's some exceptions every once in a while, somebody sure. comes from those ranks but that's very rare most of them are freaking lawyers just like you said there's a it's a total different class it's a total different mindset so i think i think this is a good question these are good questions to ask then you get to the second one punish those law and order types who join for the quote wrong unquote reasons you know i could see that i could see that you'd be thinking listen man i know that they're probably going to be like shooting people maybe that they shouldn't be shooting and do i really want them to have this awful lethal force uh you know actually professor rambo you're, you're convincing me that cops should have nine millimeter now <laughs> i'm with them i'm with them good choice good choice maybe 22 let's get them 22s 22s and when they shoot they have to be blindfolded that sounds Look. good Look, the bottom I'm line is I kid. people I kid. in law enforcement and in the military are going to get killed because we've switched back to the 9mm. Like we said before, the 9mm is adequate, but for there me, are better cartridges. For me, adequate yeah, but for there me. Are be but there are better cartridges if you're going into battle, whether it's battle with gangbangers or battle with uh, uh, bootleggers or battle with ISIS. Um, the nine millimeter is, is not as effective a cartridge as 40 cal and up. I would say 40 cal is the baseline. There are 357 SIG, 10 mil and go, go on up. Um, so people are going to die. And if I'm a anti-establishment Marxist sympathizer, that might be on my agenda. Maybe. What's the I, next I, one? Next one discourage gun savvy manly men from joining such institutions so you know if you have institutions in which you get to ha carry uh 40 cal 10 millimeter you're like oh, i won't become a cop so i can carry 40 so i can carry 10 well what do you carry we carry nine millimeter i don't know i don't know i don't I, well so far of the three so far that has the least bit of weight to it. Although it, it's, I think it might certainly, be but if I'm gun shy and I'm interested oh, in, yes, the other I'm way interested. around, yeah. not discouraging manly men or men or, or womanly women, you know, or with crap together, women, women with lady balls. Yeah. Or, or whatever. I don't I just, just, assertive strong women assertive strong men let's say that uh 
it might not necessarily discourage them from joining since if you carry nine. But one thing it will do, it will not filter out the less than manly, the less than womanly, if you will, uh, men and women from joining. It'll open up that door for the for right. the the folks that have the Smurf hands. So if if you're in the academy and you're shooting a hand cannon and you're like, I can't do this. I, look, I can't shoot this hand cannon. I'm done. I I'll, I'll never pass. I'll never qualify. Good. So you're gonna you're you gonna you're gonna bail. Here. Yeah, you're gonna bail. But now if you're shooting a nine mil, yeah, it's not so bad. This is actually easy. I, I can shoot this all day long. No problem. So it's going to encourage those types of people to stay and to apply and to become part of the institution from the bottom up. So that's that point. You ready for the next one? Oh, this next one's quite a doozy. Whew. I think we might purely, get droned for this one. Are you purely, ready? These are all purely hypothetical. Purely hypothetical. These are conversation oh. starters. And I, the, this is pure entertainment. For, oh, this for is for pure, pure entertainment purposes, entertainment purposes only. only. Yes. <laughs> any relation to any actual individuals, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Hit, hit us with this one. Number four, get the law and order types killed or dejected so they don't choose to advance in the institutions. Oh, oh thin damn. Nerd. Oh, damn. snap. Well, you went if I know... If I know I'm sending men into a dangerous situation and these are the manly men types that we don't want in leadership positions and they're seeing their friends gunned down around them because they're inadequately armed, well, then are they going to stick around um, and take their chances or are they going to say, screw this? Might not, man. So the most, I don't know, I don't know, because I would, I would think that the most capable would probably have the, I mean, some things are, beyond, no matter how skilled you are, stuff happens that you can't control, you could still get it, your your numbers could come up, so to speak, but. Well, I would, I, I, I would, would argue think this. that the more skilled people would probably still be negotiating themselves through, and it's the more skilled people that would be more of a threat to the lawyer types than the less skilled people. Well, I would, I would say this, that it's a statistics game, that it's a, look, if some of the individuals are weeded out because you're, you know, teaching at the academy with a substandard cartridge, you didn't want those guys in the first place. If what, some why are you people, calling nine millimeter a substandard cartridge? You mean substandard in terms of battle? Yes, correct. Okay. If some people choose not to join the agency because the nine millimeter may not be an adequate cartridge, then statistically, again, you've weeded some of those out. If now you have a few extra people who have joined because the cartridge isn't as intimidating and hurtful and go on down the list, then st you statistically you're you're stacking the statistic decks in your favor at multiple levels. Okay. Let's so. get to number six. Wow. As more cops are killed with an underpowered cartridge, use those statistics to advance an anti-gun narrative. I really like this one. This one's kind of devilish. I can, I can, I can actually, I could see this going into the equation bigly, bigly. Yeah. So, look, all of this is just food for thought. Right. Um, yeah, we don't have any and, statistics and, data. We're just, we're just right. asking questions, dudes. Because what we can see, I, I feel pretty confident in saying is. Sending out cops and FBI with nine millimeters is what the dumbs. Although, from my perspective, I'm okay with you sending cops and FBI out with nine millimeters because most of the things that they're going out for are to enforce laws against people that 
have not harmed others. So, but still, within the state upon state face parameter, you 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 want your cops and your in your FBI to have the effective tools. Nine millimeter, man, that's not it. Well, but then the, I that's do, why we're asking the question. Why? I do have friends, close friends in law enforcement, and and I know that they go after people who have harmed other people and who where there are victims and where the people that they're chasing are armed to the teeth. So I do want my friends to be armed adequately for the job and not to have to worry about calling in SWAT after they've been shot up. Um, I want your friends to, to get new jobs to, to join private security. And that's fine. Um, but nevertheless, there are good people in law enforcement and there are oh. douchebags in law enforcement as well. Um, and there are people in law enforcement who really don't belong there. And then there are people who I know belong there because they're the right kind of people um, who join the force for the right reasons, which is actually to help their community uh, and not to advance the agenda of the state, which is what yeah, you're. This, this, this particular show isn't going to be a debate about the usefulness or unusefulness of policing we could we could do that in another show uh this this is just about why why the nine millimeter why not the nine millimeter and yeah uh i i just i just have to throw a little out there just because some i'm getting somewhat triggered you know yeah you're easy to trigger (laughs) yeah just all right, what's the next one? What's the next one? And the next one here is when their people are in front of a jury, nine, nine millimeter sounds less threatening than Magnum Sig 40. I, I think that's that. Oh, that definitely. So by fits their into people, the I mean, your mentality. So if there's lawyers who have shot up a bunch of people because they're, they're feds, um, and you're in front of a jury of people who don't know anything about guns, and and the jury is examining the actions of the feds. Um, it's easy to say, well, you know, we used our nine millimeters to um, to you know put down this assailant, and unfortunately, he ended up dying. Versus, yeah, we shot him down with three fifty seven magnums, man. We yeah. tore him up. We, yeah, we, we blasted shot him bolts. three shotgun slugs to the face. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, so if you are a lawyer defending uh, agents, it's much easier to defend when you're. Oh, we used the 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 least powerful cartridge we could to subdue the assailant. It's unfortunate that he passed from his injuries, but we did the least amount of damage to him that we possibly could versus. Yeah, I blew his arm off with a three fifty seven Magnum. Yeah, but you shot him in he the got, back <laughs> while he yeah. was sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was a nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right, what's the next one? Next one. Uh, get the general population following the rec. I think this is a really good one. Get the general population following the recommendations of the Fed to choose a weak. I'm not going to call this an outdated cartridge, but whatever. You call it an outdated cartridge that makes any civil disturbances armed with 9mm less effective. I think I think that's a really good one, although I don't consider the 9mm to be outdated. The 9mm is still a useful round. It's just not useful for policing. Like you said, it's... I would say it's moderately, moderately, moderately useful, (laughs) almost moderately useful. It's almost moderately sort of moderately. Okay. Kind of nearly sort of in the ballpark of useful. Look, the nine millimeter will kill you dead if it hits you in the heart and the head. I mean, it's, it's, that's the bottom line and the shot placement is important. But the average Joe shooting at somebody in their hallway isn't going to be going for headshots in center mass. You know, he's just going to be laying he's lead downrange. Yep. Yeah. Um, unless he's training every week 
and is getting good training every week, um, he's going to be pathetic to mediocre uh, at best. So uh, do you want pathetic or mediocre shooting defending your home with a sort of moderately powered cartridge? That no, if it keeps sort going of. down. Yeah, it does. It does. It can't not but go down. All right, what's right. the next one? All right, next one here. Agencies fail on purpose to drive a narrative with school shootings, legislate gun restrictions, then actually do something to stop the violence and use that as proof that we need more restrictions. So, in other words... Let them take them down to nine millimeter, have cops going in with nine millimeter, not adequately stopping people. And then when you get the uh, gun control crap passed, then move the nine millimeter back up to 40 and then the cops get more effect. And they say, see, it worked. Is that what you mean? I have no freaking clue of what I meant, but I'm glad you interpreted it that way. <laughs> that was <written> like <laughs> two months ago. I was like, wait, what the hell is he saying here? Wow. Yeah, you're 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 sending them in with a less effective caliber to deal with things like school shooting. You you use school shootings, but whatever, any yeah. kind of shootings. Cops going in and they're throwing nine millimeter at somebody with a five five six, and that's that's a tough battle. And so then they're not effective, and they can say, "See, man, we're outgunned. It's terrible. It's so it's the worst, need the to, worst catastrophe." The civilians, civilians need to be disarmed. Yeah, we can't have the civilians outgunning us. And then you pass the gun legislation, and then you say, "Hey, you know what? Let's let's move it back up to 40. And so then, when somebody else shows up with uh, another, you know, AR or whatever, you got a much better chance with a few guys with a 40 as opposed to a few guys with nine. And then all of a sudden, things are more effective. And you're like, dudes. See, it works. Look how many things we stopped. With that gun like legislation. That. Yeah, with that gun legislation. So that that's it. So, that's, these, are, these are all your points. So I was hoping to have more points because I was hoping to have a conversation with you before we did this. But seeing how rushed we've been and how we've put this off for several weeks, uh, I would like, if anyone's listening, is anyone listening? I don't know. To, to throw up and, questions of I don't your have own. Any comments right like, this second. What, what would lawyers um, running institutions, why would they choose a substandard cartridge? I'm calling it a substandard cartridge compared to other cartridges that are infinitely superior in stopping a fight. What advantages do people in law enforcement have by going with the very least effective of the cartridges that we mentioned of all of the cartridges, the 10 millimeter, the 357 Magnum, the 45, the 357 SIG, the 40 Cal, all of those, that's just five cartridges. We're not even getting into some of the more obscure cartridges like the 45 super and, uh, my God, they're what wildcat cartridges. There's, 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 I believe, the 40 Super, which is like a 45 neck down to a 40. I mean, talk about effective cartridges. But none of these cartridges are mentioned. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? There's probably 10 rounds not, not that are... Not a lot of folks that are using them. Not a lot of uh, different types of guns you can buy for those cartridges. Correct. But if you're a federal agency or law enforcement, why on earth would you choose of all of the serious calibers that exist of which there's probably a dozen in semi-auto configuration why would you pick the nine millimeter over 11 others that are infinitely superior at doing what you intend to do with them uh, cops carry guns because they have to shoot people with them so why well, on earth have to Well, in some situations, they do have to. That's why they well, carry yeah. the guns. But, 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 okay. They don't in have the, to until there's a situation in which, in which their life is in danger. Well, yeah. If, if they have to shoot a gun at someone because he's charging them with a knife or shooting at them, 
why would you send them out with the least effective cartridge? Good question. It begs and, questions. And that's why we're asking the questions. So and, the questions that we've posed and the scenarios we pose are just the baseline. If you come up with better ideas and scenarios, and maybe you have some statistics that prove us wrong and say that the nine millimeter is actually superior to all those other cartridges oh, I'd love for to the see following statistics. Oh, for the following me. reasons. And okay, recoil is less. We get that one. Uh, more bullets downrange. Yeah, we get that one. Okay, uh, those I, are some one, good arguments. One advantage, I I think one advantage to the nine millimeter, especially when you're talking about at the large scale, police departments have to buy ammo. Is 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 it significantly cheaper? Oh hell yeah! That, but that, that might be a factor. But well, it's a factor. But if the military were to switch to the three fifty seven Sig, then the three fifty seven Sig ammo would become very inexpensive, and the federal agencies would be carrying it. Uh, the military would be carrying it. And then the 357 SIG, which is an infinitely superior cartridge to the 9mm, would be cheaper than the 9mm. So why are we at the 9mm? Well, we already said why. And John Smith, you just joined us late. We're just about to uh, close up shop. Uh, and you missed it. You're going to have to listen to the archive, John. John Smith is a friend of mine. And uh, especially listen to the second half of the show, John. This is the, the sh part of the show where we ask the question, why does the FBI hate the police? See, see what you think of uh, some of the ideas that Professor Rambo's thrown out there. And uh, there are at least a few of them, I think, sound pretty, pretty good, pretty credible. And a couple of them, hmm, maybe not so much, but I think... I, I think that's what you do. You throw ideas out there, even stupid ideas. You ask the questions. Sometimes, even if it's a stupid question, there are no stupid questions other than should you vote? Oh, I did that. <laughs> Had to get that little thing at the end. We're 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 about out of time here. We we did it. We are right through the show. This is this is the Professor Rambo show, basically. This episode, you you did it. This is your show, and you pulled it off. You did it, and we did have listeners. Wow, by the way. I'm I'm so proud of you, Paul. Are you proud of me for letting you take I, over the show? I didn't really take over the show, <laughs> to, but I'm proud uh, of you. Yeah, we we had 333 so far. Uh, wow, live, live listeners, so, so that's good. Just so you if folks know, oh, me, oh, go ahead. Everything that could go wrong today. Aside from being like arrested or murdered, uh, that could have you, gone wrong today. You weren't murdered. Went wrong today, and I wasn't yeah. arrested, and I wasn't in a car accident. Almost, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. Had, it was an interesting day. Had some adventures. Oh. Definitely ate a bunch of live live toads today, didn't you? Oh yeah. I had um, I had a pretty adventurous day myself, but. But really, compared to yours, I had a very peaceful day. Not not a great day for me, but man, no, I can't. We can't tell you all the things that happened to him because then you'd know too much, and that would be inappropriate. We we can't allow that. It was anyway. I wanted to add: if you're watching on YouTube, then that means that you you missed all the Facebook fun and you didn't get to see show the show live. So therefore. You should like the Liberty Principle Facebook page, which is linked in the video description. So be sure you go over to the Liberty Principle Facebook page, and you can watch all of the Is Daily shows live, including tomorrow night, when I will be joined with the uh, the One True Niz for Is Daily Wednesday. Don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but uh, don't have the story selected. But I have a feeling that we're going to be talking about the the little march around the flagpole that's happening tomorrow in in government schools as, oh. as children are are being uh, socially pressured to to cry out for a police state to demand a police state but they they think that they're that they're beating back the the 
the the epidemic of violence against children in schools that doesn't exist. That's well, an interesting show tomorrow. Um, hey, by the I way, you- I'll just throw this out here. If you're available and you want to join us tomorrow for that conversation, you're welcome to join us on His Daily Wednesday. If you, oh, I if might have to. Oh, I might have to. Um, I think you might I'd want like- to join that conversation. Yeah. There's um, There's always a backlash with a certain group of people within a society that rejects whatever it is that's considered normal, popular, cool. And there's going to be a substantial amount, there will be a substantial amount of children that are being forced to participate in this that will look back on it as adults and say, what the hell were they thinking? This was so inappropriate to do to children at the school level. Psychological terrorism. It's psychological terrorism. To politicize school like this? Um... I disagree with what my school did, and I think I have to start examining the opposite side. I think in the long run, this will hurt their cause, Paul. Dude, save it for the show tomorrow. Yeah, let, I will do what I can to get my yeah, schedule even cleared. If, like, like, I know you can't join us probably right at 9. Just call in, you know, ping me and let me know in advance and... Uh, just call in during the show. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk you know, tomorrow for sure. Right? Yeah, because it's going to be an interesting show. Because I've got, I'm I'm not a happy guy. <laughs> I'll just say, yeah, I'm not a happy guy. I do peaceful parenting. I allow my daughter to choose if she wants to go to government schools, and I would prefer her to be unschooled at home. She's chosen to go to the government schools, and not cool, man. Not not a good deal. All right. Yeah. Just just as up. a real quick, every one of my kids came to me and said, Why is government stupid? Dude. <laughs> That's the beautiful Dude. moment. That's I was like beautiful moment. Oh my god. I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> you made yes. just made your father cry. <laughs> You're playing me, right? It's not Father's Day. Why are you giving me oh, this look, gift? I look, look, I look like De Niro from yeah. one of those stupid movies. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Hey! A raging bull. Oh. Okay. All right. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to punch this puppy in the head. We're going to shut this lemon stand down. Uh, do you have any last remarks before I give my... Oh, 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 i sorry. Before you do your last remarks, I almost forgot. I want to do a promo here. This is the shirt that I will be wearing on his daily Mondays for the foreseeable future. And here it is. I'm going to stand up. If you can see it, could you read what the shirt says? I can't see squat. No, no, oh, wait. Stand up. I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what is or what a madman is. Yes, that shirt. I, this is not my shirt. I, it's my saying. And Bodhi Agora, my co-host on His Daily Tuesday, he designed the shirt. Uh, uh, but I put a link in the description here. I'll put a link in the YouTube as well. You could buy this shirt. Buy this shirt. Support Bodhi and and buy this shirt and become, become one of my T-shirt twins. And if you do buy the shirt and you wear it, send a picture of yourself wearing the shirt and I'll include it in the show. All right. Unless, of course, you do something crazy. I don't, I mean, I don't. And don't anyway. be blowing shit up while wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah, you know, don't do all, that. all things legal. Yeah. Like, no, no sending. I don't want to pa- no sending- see some. I don't want to see someone with like a, a similar body size to me with a ski mask on and the picture they send in is like from a bank, you know, a bank uh, camera thingy. I don't want that. That I'm not going to share that on the show. I can tell you that in advance. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here. I will be back on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. It's the... The page is a picture with uh, me with the AR-15, which, yes, 
I was lost in a boating accident, but I still have that picture to remember. Dude, my the AR-15 Great Lakes, the yeah, Great, Great Lakes, Lakes have claimed lots of boats and guns, and bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies as well. Those Great Lakes, a lot of stuff locked out. There's a reason why they're called Great Lakes because there's right. a lot of great stuff in the bottom of those lakes. Great stuff at the bottom of the great place. Stuff. But but I'll be back on t- uh, tomorrow, twelve thirty p.m. for headlines you may have missed, and tomorrow night uh, we'll be doing. Uh, is Daily Wednesday? Wow, I couldn't remember the name of the show. Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz, and hopefully we'll get Professor Rambo joining us. That'll be fun to have three hosts on. We haven't done that yet, so I hope that happens. And other than that, thank you everyone who joined us, especially for a couple of you that uh, commented here, and for all of you that wow, watched and didn't out. comment. You're literally, I mean. You're literally worse than the Dallas Cowboys. There, I said it. All right. Good night, everybody. Matinefutu, though.